Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Welcome to the moon. I am your host for this evening, Lawrence Ray. And today I am joined by my esteemed co-hosts, Cotto Martinez and Jerry. And today we are interviewing King Spencer. Uh, and we're also talking about a little bit of news about Visa, about uh, billionaire skeptics becoming Bitcoin fans and much more. So stick around to hear the news. And uh, well, Ricardo, Jerry, first off, how are you guys doing this week? How's things going with you? I'm doing great. Thanks, Lawrence. How are you doing? Life is good. I say it's the first sunny day in the UK for feels like a long time. So I'm, I'm feeling pretty good right now. And uh, Jerry, you're right. Yeah, I'm doing pretty great, man. Thanks. Nice. Nice. All right. Cool. Um, yeah. And well, King Spence, before I ask how you're doing, I'll, uh, I'll introduce you to the audience uh, just in case anyone doesn't know. <clears throat> so King Spence is a music artist and he recently became known in the crypto community uh, for filming a music video and song called Stimmy on Bitcoin. Um, and I must say, we're lucky and privileged to have you on our podcast today. Uh, so how are you doing, mate? How's it going? Man, I'm good, man. I'm blessed. Happy to be on here chatting with you guys. You know, appreciate y'all for having me on. I'm excited. Nice. I love it. I say, we'll, we'll get to yeah interviewing you pretty soon. Um, but first off, let's just chat about the news. Um, give everyone an idea of what's been going on. Ricardo, you've got a pretty hot piece of news, hot off the press. Uh, give it to me. This one is from Forbes, and it is called Visa will start settling transactions in USDC on Ethereum. And the article is pretty much what the title says. Visa has announced that they're going to start settling um, fiat transactions with the US dollar stablecoin using the Ethereum blockchain. So it's a pretty big development. It's got the market kind of bullish. Ever since this announcement was made, uh, Bitcoin has started uh, rising in price again. I'm sure Ethereum is probably through the roof right now uh, with this announcement. What do you guys think about it? I mean, first off, I wish it happened yesterday because I, <laughs> I sold some ETH yesterday. <laughs> I sold some ETH for Bitcoin. I was like, oh, for God, God's sake. And, I'd held, and I'd, FYI, I'd held that for like over a year. I diamond hands that ETH for like a year and a half. <laughs> I sold like a small amount, but like I was getting fed up with it. Um, so yeah, no, like the, it's, 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 it's good news in a sense that there's more crypto adoption coming. Um, and I was trying to explain this earlier to some, I was on Clubhouse and people were really trying to understand why Ethereum, like the gas fees are stupidly high. Um, you know, they're not delivering on ETH 2.0 as well as they had planned to, all this stuff. Um, pretty simple reason, really. Um, you can't send USDC at the moment, as far as I'm aware, on the Bitcoin network. Um, and Bitcoin and ETH and KIN are the only three tokens or currencies out there that have regulatory clarity in the US so far. And KIN is a complete shit coin. I think it's owned by Kick or something, isn't it? I have no idea. Um, so yeah, that's, that's out the window. So you only have really ETH. If you're a big, big company like Visa and you really want to stick to regulatory like clarity side of things, you want the regulations on your side, you want to make sure you're not doing something stupidly illegal and, and messing it up, that's your only bet. So that's a big reason, I think, as to why this has occurred and why they didn't choose Zilliqa or Algorand or Tron or anywhere else you can send USDC. Um, but yeah, that's the explanation for people wondering. King Spence, man, are you like a, an ETH guy or are you more like a, a Bitcoin guy? What's your situation? What's your experience? Hey, bro, like I said on the song, bro, if it ain't Bitcoin, it's a shit coin. <laughs> <laughs> and I stand on that, bro. Like when I first got into crypto, of course, like most people who first get into crypto, I played with all types of cryptos. But overall, I learned my lesson. But I won't lie; it's good to hear that you know, um, some somebody like Visa is getting into crypto. That that is good to hear. Unfortunately, it's ETH, but it's still nice to hear. I don't see how they're going to make it work with these gas fees, though. Yeah, so like, are they going to be batch settling like hundreds of transactions in one ETH transaction? I think or, that's the like, plan. I, I believe be... that's the plan. Yeah, I believe yeah. that's the plan. So, like, okay. they deal with like so many transactions per second, right? And I'm assuming that they're going to, I understand they're going to batch or it's for like the larger cross border style transactions where the gas fee isn't that bad um, in comparison to the amount they're sending, right? Compared to using the legacy system. That's what yeah. I understand. And then, obviously, second to that, you've got the if ETH 2.0 is successful and fees are hugely hugely reduced and the, and the transaction per second speed goes up then visa is even more happy right so uh, that's my understanding uh, so visa is basically going to be the lightning network for ethereum it sounds like that's kind of what's going on but 
<laughs> uh, it's just a little bit iffy. And, and it's obviously all to do with the USDC only side of things, right? So I think they're just kind of piggybacking off of the Ethereum network to just use that stable coin. And um, as I said before, I, I, you know, if Algorand to look at any of these faster, cheaper um, networks are available, they could have maybe even used that. Although maybe security is a thing on their, on their concern list. And obviously ETH has better security as far as I'm aware, could be completely wrong here than Zilliqa and Algorand um, as far as I'm aware just because of the market cap size and the amount of nodes. Um, Bitcoin being number uno when it comes to security, obviously. Um, but yeah, no, it's interesting news. Um, I'm going to come in with uh, my piece of news, which was quite, um, quite yeah, I, I'd never heard of this guy, right? And I don't know if you guys either have either, but um, <clears throat> the title of the news is called How Education and Envy Turned a Billionaire Skeptic into a Bitcoin Bull. Uh, and it's talking about a guy, it's one of Norway's richest people, um, and his name is going to get this wrong here. Oystein Strays Betalen. You guys ever heard of him? I hadn't. No. Um, super rich guy, obviously, mm. by the sounds of it. Um, and yeah, essentially, he on March the 18th was quoted essentially as saying, like, the energy costs are enormous for uh, Bitcoin every transaction. It's extremely environmentally damaging. Uh, you know, Bitcoin is nonsense. I can't bear to look at it. All this stuff, right? This is March the 18th. And then nine days later, <laughs> on March the 26th, comes out saying, when the facts change, I change. Um, and he's essentially bought Bitcoin <laughs> within nine days, uh, which is pretty impressive turnaround. Like, to go from that hate feel fueled about it to that, <laughs> you yeah. throw it. Um, and so that was quite quite interesting. But yeah, apparently he, he puts up to two things. He says he had a meeting with Mirai X, um, a crypto exchange. Um, and they like did a lot to persuade him that hey like this uh, this energy fud is fud, uh, and also he saw that Acre Solutions that we reported about on News of the Week last week I think it was or the week before last they'd bought a load of Bitcoin and he thought well hold up a second this is where the NV comes in if uh, if they're um, if they're making money off of this I want to be making money off this too <laughs> so that's kind of where his change of mind came from as well but um, yeah I didn't know if you guys had any thoughts on this like um, we've seen quite a few people switch a roo on it like i know michael saylor was a little bit eh on bitcoin way back and then he completely changed his tune ray dalio kind of has said some stuff about it but he's kind of said that he doesn't hate it essentially and that he's not personally fully against it so what do you guys think about this news bullish yeah i think it's bullish i also like the fact that he did an about face on it when uh new information came to light i respect people that do that anyone that takes the time to actually look into bitcoin and to understand it and how it works comes away with with a positive uh point of view on bitcoin hey king spence man this could be the you know the topic of your next song right 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 <laughs> yeah bro like every time i talk to somebody like you know in my community i'm like one of the first heavy adapters of bitcoin and uh that's the main thing a lot of people always ask is like what is bitcoin what is bitcoin i always say like yo just do a little bit of research buy 10 bucks if you don't got time to really do research but do your research and anybody who does their research always ends up getting sold on it it sounds like it's another uh, case of somebody FOMOing and hearing about it, seeing the price shoot up and then be like, wow, so now you want to get into it. It's like we've been telling people to get into Bitcoin since years ago, but, you know, people just now starting to catch on, I guess. Yeah, definitely. It's good, it's good to see as well. Like um, one thing I quite like is that there's no... Unlike, say, for example, if you go back into go back in time, right, and you've got people getting interested in the stock market and shares, and there seemed to be like these community barriers, like certain communities couldn't really get involved. There's like a barrier to entry. But now it's like, hey, we all have smartphones. A lot of people have laptops and stuff too, but you know, you just need a smartphone and an internet connection, whether that's data or Wi-Fi, and you're in. So like anyone can empower themselves. That's the that's the key for me as to why I got so into crypto. Like you can go to any community. And you can help someone gain financial independence, like wherever they're from, there whatever the background. That's awesome to me. Like it's a unique unifier. Um, so that's a that's a really cool thing. Uh, yeah, I got yeah, I got to give credit to. I, I agree with Ricardo. We got to give credit to the man for changing his mind in the light of new information because, um, unlike uh, you know, unlike certain people, I wouldn't mention names, but you know, like Warren Buffett, you know, he has doubled down on his um rat poison, you know, stance and. 
you know, I think we are going to see more sailor type, you know, billionaires coming to the space, you know, to buy more Bitcoin for whatever reason that is. It could be, you know, greed, you know, it's, it's like for instance, you, we, we did hear that, you know, Elon Musk, you know, on Tesla, you know, made more money, you know, huddling Bitcoin than they've made, you know, selling Tesla cars. You know, that's totally mind blowing <laughs> if you think about it. So I think we're going to see uh, these are more billionaires, you know, try to, you know, get into Bitcoin purely for the gains, maybe along the, along the line, they might get enlightened, like Sailor did, you know, become, you know, full Bitcoin evangelist, but that's yet to be seen. But I expect, in fact, for me, I believe the peak would be when Warren Buffett does, you know, buy Bitcoin. Yeah, no, I think it's a good point. Like, I, I'm definitely pro when people are willing to say, hey, <clears throat> I was wrong basically uh like that's a that's yeah. a cool thing to me like and, and i've done it before in my life um i mean the other day i even wanted to do it like i sent out a tweet and said hey if anyone can explain to me why cardano deserves to be in that number five like market cap spot or whatever like i will give you some cardano like i'll send you 50 50 ada because i was like i'm willing to take because i personally could not see the value whatsoever but i was like hey please explain and like be nice about it like i'm not trying to troll you and uh, to be fair like there were some good responses and my opinion of it has gone up I, I'm, I'm more open to it like i think there's some really cool stuff they're working on but i was not convinced uh, i ended up paying a guy like half the amount because i actually felt like, i felt bad i was like this guy really put effort in and like to be fair to him he put so much effort in i was like take some ada bro like i sent him 25 ada but but like it's good to be able to say yeah you know what okay, like I, I didn't like this thing, whatever, but this person has given me good information and I have changed my mind. And in that case, this guy has changed his mind on Bitcoin. Like I think most people will do once they get properly educated on the, on the subject. Okay, well, without further ado, I think we've got to skip past the news because I'm personally much more interested in talking to King Spencer about what's going on in his life, quite frankly. Um, so we're going to skip the game segment entirely as well because I just want to get into the, the, the interview um, and get chatting. Um, so, hey, King Spence, first thing, uh, first things first, tell the audience, give them like the little sort of 30 second, 60 second summary cliff notes, who you are, what you're up to, what do you stand for kind of thing. Right, right, right. OK, so King Spence, artist name, Spence Sino. I'm from Tulsa, Oklahoma, stay in Dallas, Texas. I'm primarily a videographer. Um, I'm a I'm real crazy about Bitcoin. Ever since I got in, it's done nothing but go up. Ever since anybody's got in, it's done nothing but go up. And uh, you know, that's that's just one of the things that I really like to um brand myself with is Bitcoin and shoot music videos, man. That's that just about wraps it up for me though. I like it. And I guess first question that makes the most sense topically here, as we've mentioned Bitcoin as we always do a million times already on the podcast. Um, when, it, when it comes to Bitcoin, like what, what was it that got you interested in, in the first place? Like what, what was it that, you know, sparked the interest? Was it like the, someone's making money, I'm going to get involved? Was it hearing about right. the idealistic standpoint? What, what was it that kind of got you in? And then what was it that kind of hooked you uh, on Bitcoin? Okay, so I initially got uh, introduced to Bitcoin by my brother Richard. And he had, um, he basically, it was during that, are y'all familiar with BitConnect? Okay, yeah, yeah, the, the, the scam, yeah. What's up, what's up, BitConnect? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was part of the people who lost money in that, you know what I mean? Oh, so, man. That was my introduction to Bitcoin. And then maybe like, I don't know how much later it was after that, um, I looked back into it or I, I don't really remember what happened, but I just ended up spending a hundred dollars on it and made a song about it. And, you know, I just, ever since then, maybe like two years ago, maybe longer, but ever since then, I just been regularly purchasing Bitcoin and talking about it. Gotcha. Nice. So you're just accumulating and hodling basically. Uh, yeah. You know, I like it. That's a good strategy. And hey, like uh, if anything, it's been shown that hodlers generally outperform traders, I think like 99 plus percent of the time. So why not? Right. It's the right way to go. Like even through the bear market, I was just accumulating hodling and then doing the occasional like buy and sell in and out of Bitcoin very occasionally. And I doubled my money like two or three times. Um, so yeah. it works. Bitcoin is good. Bitcoin is good. <laughs> Damn right. Uh, no, I like that. Um, I guess you say like about Obviously, you made a song about Bitcoin. Um, like, well, the first thing, obviously, is that 
what's happened recently, one of the big things was that Michael Saylor, uh, I think it was Michael Saylor, retweeted your video, right? And obviously, right. boom, like, you know, it gets a bit of a blow up and, and you got quite a big response from the community. A lot of people like fans of it. Was that like a, a bit of a shock to you or like how, how did that kind of come about? Like, did he, did, he, did he speak to you before that or since or how's it, how's it gone down? Yeah, so I wasn't expect. So I've published a few different Bitcoin songs just through Twitter and YouTube, Instagram, Facebook, whatever. And I've always got some kind of response that I'm really not used to being that, you know, I'm primarily just film videos for others. But um, whenever somebody had actually DM me and saying, wow, bro, you got a sailor to retweet your stuff. And I was like, like I didn't even know because it was so many retweets going on that I had no clue that Sailor had retweeted it. So whenever I went and looked, yeah, bro, I could say like, no, I wasn't expecting that kind of response because it's like, honestly, the music that I make is more so for like my community. You know what I mean? So like in the Bitcoin community, I can't really say that that's just like, a community that I've been a part of. You feel me? Like more so like my hood, you know what I'm saying? People people who know me, that's who I'm really just trying to expose Bitcoin to. So whenever you see the Bitcoin Twitter community getting on your back, it's kind of like, dang, that's what's up. Because I don't get that kind of response from, you know, people at home that's not really that familiar with it. Generally, they're just like ask questions like, hey, bro, I saw your song. I'm interested. What do I need to do? But when I hopped on Twitter and saw that, I was like, <laughs> that's crazy. <laughs> so, yeah, that was pretty cool. I love it, man. Like um, that you said about like uh, how people from your community, I guess that they, they maybe don't stand as much, but like they, um, I, they, they must be happy to see you like on the come up, right? And like getting this kind right, of exposure. Right, right. Um, and it, and yeah. it teaches them something and shows them something as well, right? Like something to be proud right. of. Um, but like, I guess as well, so did you find that the music for you almost acts as, as uh, uh, like a sort of, uh, like a light, like a, a lighthouse kind of being like, hey, like I know about this, you're cool to come and talk to me about this. Is it, is it like a way that you find people come to you to get into Bitcoin? Is that kind of how it acts? For sure. Yeah, ever since I started dropping, like, Bitcoin music, yo, I've probably turned 100 people on to Bitcoin. You know what I'm saying? My main thing is just trying to get people to hodl it. Like, because yeah. you know how you know how it shoots up. People will see those gains and be like, oh, take my money and get out. But I, that's the main, that, that's the primary thing I try to tell people who I turn on to Bitcoin is, yo, like, buy it and just, like, just stop looking at the price. Like, yeah. I know it's hard, but, like... <laughs> Just huddle it, you know what I'm saying? That's the big picture. So, yeah, you know. No, I like it, man. Like, I, I always try and, like, uh, I've got, like, a few friends to come to me, but maybe I should, uh, like, make a song, and then that way, like, more people are going to yeah, come to like me that. and be asking. <laughs> they don't like that, for sure. It works, man, whatever works. Um, I think with my, like, uh, my English accent, it might be a little bit, uh, you know, kind of pathetic sounding. It's like when I do the Fresh Prince of Bel-Air or something, and uh, people think, yeah, oh, yeah. I think, hey, I think it sounds funny. Job, bro. <laughs> I'll, give it a go. I'll be in a song with Skepta or something you know like featuring Skepta that'd be good no I, I wish yeah. I went to see him gig once but I'll, I'll move on yeah. anyway <laughs> but no like so, I guess oh sorry yeah sorry I, it was sorry go ahead. I had a quick question first of all how long have you been making music for and second of all did you record the video because the video was really really well done yeah I've been making music um so I make music for fun, right? Like I enjoy making music. That's like one of my pastimes. So I I've been doing it for maybe like I've been rapping as long as I can remember, but actually publishing music maybe like four or five years, right? Um, now as far as the production of the video goes, I uh, brought all my kinfolk to Vegas with me. Uh, we we actually just went to Vegas. We just shot that video maybe seven days ago, maybe less, right? So we all went to Vegas and I just kind of handed them the camera. I was like, record me right here. You know what I mean? So, and then, you know, I've been traveling. I've probably been in like four different states in the last like nine days. So I was just getting footage everywhere that I was at. And yeah, I put the video together at the airport. Man, like to just awesome. put that together at the airport is, is pretty impressive. Cause I, I saw it and I thought the same. Like I was like, the production quality was pretty damn good. Uh, I like it, man. Like congrats on that um i suppose Thanks. like um because you say you um are more like uh generally more more making music videos for other people and stuff and then obviously right. you rap and things for fun and like it's just an enjoyment side of things for you um i gotta i gotta ask uh so obviously when it comes to the music you've worked uh with nipsey hustle um, sure. as i can see when i went onto your profile and i was like 
Uh, what was that like? Um, like how how did that almost like how was that for you like how is he as a person like i've always been interested to know because i've heard only good things about the guy uh there's only good things to say about nick man but no yeah so um initially maybe like 2016 i went out there to film are you familiar with the artist jay stone uh i feel like i've heard the name but i wouldn't say i'm okay. like I have. right 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 well, yeah, he's one of Nipsey's artists. Uh, and I initially started going to L.A. to film for him. And, like, so the very first time that I ever went to L.A., I got the opportunity to meet Nipsey Hussle, yo. And, you know, I'm like, I'm one of a diehard Nip fan. You know what I'm saying? Like, he encouraged me a lot. So whenever I got to meet him, that was crazy. So over years, I've developed a rapport with his team. Not so much with him, but with his team. So uh, about... 2017, I believe, we went to L.A. and an artist from Oklahoma City named Skrilla uh, had a song with Nipsey Hussle and he wanted me to shoot it. So, hey, yo, we went out there. That was my first time. At, like, I've been to a lot of shows and film for Nip or not even for him before, like, Jay Stone and them and Nip was a part of it. But, like, that was the first time that I ever did, like, a project where, like, I actually get to communicate with Nipsey Hussle, yo. Rest in peace, man. But yeah, bro, like Nip, the humblest dude ever. It's, it's like, he was regular. He was just a regular dude, but it was dope because he was so much more than regular to me. You know what I'm saying? But yeah, bro, Nip, Nip is big time. You know what I'm saying? Rest in peace. That was one of the greatest experiences of your boy's life. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I understand that. Like um, some of the stuff he was doing as well. Like he was a smart guy. Like he was plugged in. Like it came to business and like the stuff he was trying to do for the community and things. Like right. I remember when he passed, he was in the, he was in the middle of doing like a documentary and like working on so much stuff for like community outreach and promoting like the community and helping people like grow and learn. And it was it's impressive to like see like outside of his music that I already enjoyed. I was like, oh, this is it's a killer shame to to lose someone like that, but. I suppose it is what it is, but it's, it must have been amazing to work with the guy. Um, yeah, that's crazy. And it's not very many videographers that can say that. I'm one of them, you know what I'm saying? So I'm proud of myself club. on that. You're one of them, right. and you've got a song about uh, Bitcoin, or a few songs about Bitcoin. So hey, you're right. a rare breed, man. You're a rare breed. Salute. Salute, bro. Why do you think there's like such an overlap between hip hop and Bitcoin? Like there's lots of Bitcoin rap songs that I've heard. Well, see, I'll be honest, I'm not familiar with any Bitcoin rap, you know what I mean? So, uh, at least where I'm from, people still rapping about that dirty fiat, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> but me personally, uh, I, I feel like I'm definitely the first person, I feel like in my entire region, but let me not say that because I haven't researched or anything, but as far as my knowledge goes, I haven't heard one song that somebody even references cryptocurrency, you know what I mean? But um, I know Money Man has referenced, uh, but he's more so a mainstream artist. Are y'all familiar with Money Man? No. I'm personally not, no. Okay, yeah. Well, he's he's more mainstream, and I've heard him do a bunch of crypto references. But yeah, bro, I can't really say that I've noticed the overlap between Bitcoin and hip-hop, at least where I'm from. You know what I mean? It must be because I, I listen to, like, lots of Bitcoin podcasts and stuff. And, yeah, you know, like, I always hear, like, random, like, crypto rap songs that people would like put on like at the beginning or the end or whatever yeah so. what do you think about them they say i'm pretty cool some of them are good some of them are cheesy yeah. it just kind of depends yeah. on the artist you know like some rappers right, are right, obviously right. a lot better than others yeah right, right, right. but um yeah there's been some cool ones that i've heard that i've been like oh okay yeah this one's all right like <laughs> hey hopefully mine's aren't mine aren't cheesy but i can't say that yeah now i can't say i've heard like some cheesy bitcoin songs like yeah this is pretty if this you if you were cheesy, we wouldn't have had you on the on the podcast. <laughs> yeah, 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 man. No, that's uh, that's Salute. good enough confidence. Uh, I'll take it. I'll take it. I, I, I'll make a prediction. I predict that um, Spencer is going to have a collab with Soldier Boy. Oh, actually, like I kind of like that. Yeah, because Soldier Boy is getting into crypto, isn't he? Like he's been shopping oh, no, around he's... a bit, I think. But yeah, uh, yeah. I'll notice. Yeah, yeah, I'll be down. Come on, soldier. Come on, come on. Let's, spin. let's do it. <laughs> do like a like a parody of some of his older songs. So instead of having like uh, the like the soldier boy dance one and like what's it, kiss me through the phone and shit. Like you can do like um or oh, I'm trying to think one that would be good would be like doing one with Rick Ross. Instead of bands make a dance, you do like blocks or something pathetic like that. Yeah, <laughs> it's like a crazy. joke one. <laughs> blocks make a dance. Right. <laughs> so hey, ridiculous. Go crazy. 
<laughs> but hey, I would, I would, I'd listen to it. So whatever, like it's, it's slap. Uh, I'd listen to it. Throwing uh, ledgers at the uh, stripper pole. <laughs> <laughs> Just to imagine, like, and then have people have the dance and stuff. Like, instead of like doing the I'll money, probably like, throwing them paper wallets. Yeah, you know, blocks on top you know of blocks on the chain, <laughs> like paper wallets. <laughs> That'd be amazing. No, I like it. So yeah, it's, it's safe to say you're definitely planning on making some more pro crypto music. Uh, by the For sure. Here, right? Yeah, I try not to force it. You know what I mean? Like, even a stimmy on Bitcoin song, I just made that the day that I got my stimulus check, and I was like, <laughs> I'm buy Bitcoin with it, and I was like. I'm about to make a song about it. Like, I don't sit up all day and just try to, like, force songs out. But whenever, you know, something interesting is going on in my life that's real and authentic, I like to hop on, hop in, pull out my little mic, you know what I'm saying, and make some music about it, you know? I love yeah. it. It's a, it's a good idea. Like, uh, I respect it. Like, you're obviously doing it for the fun side of it, but there's also an element of grind to it, like putting out different songs and just uh, right. doing your best with the video and making it, making it work. For uh, sure. I guess, like, what's your, like, what would, if, if, you, if you could think forward, like, a year or so, like, what would your perfect kind of, like, outcome be for the year? Do you want to get, are you looking to kind of explore other areas of life more, or are you looking to kind of get more into the videoing or more into the music making? Like, where do you think people are going to find you in, like, a year's time from now? Well, yeah, you know, uh, I'm pretty serious about the videography standpoint of things, so, you know, I really stand on that. Um, but other than that, you know, I'm, I'm a heavy investor in Bitcoin or not, not even an investor, but consumer of Bitcoin. And, uh, you know, it'd be nice if I could retire off of that next year. <laughs> but, that, you know, just chilling, shooting music videos, traveling, you know what I mean? Chilling with my girl and, you know, loving my family, bro. Bitcoin, music and family, bro. That's about all for me, you know? That's the trident. Yeah, that's the, yeah, that's the yeah. three rules. Speaking about your... um you know, living off Bitcoin or retiring and you off Bitcoin next year. That's pretty interesting. Uh, that means you have a pretty um, high um, hopes of Bitcoin. So what's your prediction for the price of Bitcoin by the end of 2022? I'll be honest, y'all. I, I can't say what my prediction is, but I got my, my, my money says, right? I got my money on it. My money says that it'll be higher than where it's at right now, you know? And even if it's not, I'm a diehard hodler. Even if it drops... I don't care. Like, I don't lose sleep over Bitcoin like I did when I first got in years ago. Like, I'm a diehard hodler. I believe in the technology. I just, I'm just sitting back, kicking back, letting everybody else be surprised about what's going on. You know what I mean? Word, word. <laughs> so wherever it's at, I know long term, it's going to be way higher than, like, I honestly believe that I'll retire on Bitcoin. You know, next year is probably a little unrealistic, but <laughs> it, you never know. Bitcoin, Bitcoin, Bitcoin to show you, like, don't sleep on BTC. You know what I'm saying? That's true, man. Like, whenever I, like, see uh, dips occur, even large, like, bear markets occur, like, in my back of my head, I'm always sitting there thinking, eh, just wait till the next halving and... Yeah. Gonna, like, you know what I mean? That's almost, almost, almost a guaranteed pump from there anyway. Like, you know what I mean? Like, right. it goes through its cycle so far, so I'm just thinking... If it went down to 5k from here, I'd still be like, eh, I'm just gonna buy some more and just wait till, yeah, the next right? Thing and no sleep sure. lost at all. Like, I sleep great, even all the dips, everything. You know, I buy on a rise or a drop, you know what I'm saying? I don't care, I'm BTC, you know what I'm saying? There's nobody that's bought Bitcoin and held like for one halving cycle that's not like up 100% on their investment. So Yo, it's, it's I'm trying to like, tell people, just hold it, just hold it. Like don't get surprised by a little $50 gain. You know what I mean? Like my mom's, I put my mom's on BTC, right? And she up like, she up probably like $200. And she like, oh, Jay, should I? I'm like, no, hold it. Don't do nothing. Just hold on to it. You know what I'm saying? So yeah, you know, I. I'll be trying to put my people's on, let them know, like, get down with this BTC, it's the future. Yeah, no, I, I get that. That makes sense. It's like, a, it's a good thing to do. And I always try to talk to my friends about it. Like, I try not to sound like a super over-the-top evangelist, like, church-going kind of guy who's, like, pushing. Right, right, you know, right. I, I, always, I always wary of myself coming across, like, uh, like a Jehovah's Witness who knocks on the door and kind of tries to force you into the religion. I'm always like, I'll let them come to me a little bit. Like, I'll put it out there. That's what I'm involved in. They'll come to me, and then I'll, like, you know, attack them with the truth. But until exactly. uh, that point then yeah but no i like it yeah, I try like, to you, speak the real straight you said what no I was like, have, you, have you got any experience um like you say obviously you're a holder right but like have you ever actually like tried spending any bitcoin like on actual objects and things like that have you ever used bitcoin like for that kind of thing or are you just literally a hodler and then you use the dirty fiat to, to buy stuff 
Yeah, I'll, I'll be honest. I have sold Bitcoin before, but other than like just a cash app transaction, yo, I, I haven't spent Bitcoin on anything, you know. And, you know, obviously a lot of places are still adapting it. You know what I mean? So uh, I haven't really had much opportunity to spend it. But even if I had the opportunity to spend it right now, I still just use the fiat, you know what I mean? Because, you know, Bitcoin is just too valuable to me, you know. I, I'd rather hold it until everybody accepts it then to, because once everybody accepts it, I believe that's when it will be most valuable, you know. But, like, right now, I just kind of huddle it, use the, use the dirty green, you know what I mean? And, you know, rock out like that. So, Spencer, how much of your, you know, if you're going to, you know, like you said, you're standing on, you're going to work, keep on working on your videography. And so how much of your future work is going to be influenced by Bitcoin? Are we going to see more, you know, Bitcoin, you know, related, you know, content coming out, you know, from your workshop? For sure. Yeah, for sure. I always like, like I said, I do this for fun. So it's not hard for me. You know what I mean? So like whenever anything that influences me that's related to Bitcoin happens, I always like try to find some kind of way to share it in a creative way with the people that follow me. But yeah, so like forever, you know what I'm saying? Because I feel like as a hodler, I got a part to play, you know what I'm saying? And getting everybody on board with, you know, Bitcoin so that we can reach the promised land that some people like to call it. So, you know, that's, yeah, so forever, you know what I mean? Forever until all governments in the world deregulate it and, you know, they start shooting people in the head for hodling Bitcoin. I'm going to be a hodler, yo. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. I say this because, um, you know, people, music is very powerful. You know, it's, it's, it's very powerful. And, you know, I think one of the you know, barriers, you know, towards Bitcoin adoption is the fact that people have to go learn about it, have to spend time, you know, reading it. But music, through music, you can pass the message across, you know, you can just, you know, people listen to your music and they can, you know, understand and feel like you said, like you had a bunch of people reach out to you after listening to the your Bitcoin song. And and I think, you know, that would be very important, especially going forward, you know, people, you know, who would listen to your, to your content coming out and they, that would probably be the first time, you know, having to interact with Bitcoin, hear about Bitcoin. So I think that would be, you know, very important going forward towards the adoption of, you know, Bitcoin and other cryptocurrencies. Right, 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 right. For sure, for sure. Were you aware that the stimulus, uh, being spent on bitcoin has been like a meme for a few months now on twitter yeah uh i originally saw somebody on twitter has said that like today if uh when you if you spent your first stimulus on bitcoin it's worth like 10 10k or something like that and i was like well you know although i've been spending money on bitcoin like i've spent a ton of stimulus checks on bitcoin over time but i i just was like you know I encourage, maybe you don't spend your whole stimulus if you need it, like, that bad, you know what I mean? Like, if you, if the fridge, your stomach growling and the fridge is empty, you probably don't want to spend your whole stimulus on Bitcoin. But if you got it to spend, I would highly advise it. Like, you know, you know what I mean? Like, I mean, the numbers speak for themselves. Like, numbers don't lie. Like, I can say whatever I want, but I can show you even better, you know what I mean? So, over time, you know, it's a great investment. Do you sell your music or like for Bitcoin? Like, do you accept Bitcoin like for downloads and stuff like that? Right. So my boy Steven, uh, S the NC on Twitter, bro, he's like, he's like kind of took me under his wing as far as like everything Bitcoin. And that's something that we discussed. Haven't quite got into accepting Bitcoin for it yet, right? But um, I gotta be honest, I'm still like uh up and coming artists to an extent like i'm so occupied with videography you know what i mean that like like i say music is what i do for fun you know what i mean so i'm getting there but you know in time i'll, I'll be ready to take some of that btc up off anybody who's willing to spend it you know what i mean oh nice i try like uh, when the time comes you can look at like a btc pay server or something like that maybe um but but like um, something that you can maybe check out. Have you heard of um, Audius? It's called. It's like an app. Audius. Yeah, no, nah, I would have to get that from you. I, I ch check it out, man. Like it's not um, Bitcoin based. It's, they've got their own token called an audio or something like that. But besides that point, um, it's like, I think it's the most decentralized music app out there. And um, it's kind of like Spotify in a way, but a little bit more social media-esque. So if, for example, I follow like Disclosure and people like, I don't know, people like that, like some DJs on there, 
Um, and I don't think there's that much hip hop on there at the moment, actually, from memory. But I follow like a few different people. And if they like a song, like I get to see that they like almost are, are promoting that song. Like, yeah, we like that song from that random artist I'd never heard of. And it, you can describe, right. discover music really well. But it's like super, like there's a lot of crypto people on there and it's like really cool. So like just, it's free to get, uh, get on the app and you can become like a creator and stuff. And it might be worth sticking hey, the songs it. on there. Okay, yeah, I'm gonna check that out for sure. Yeah, like it could be useful for you. That's like find some new people. As I say, again, like not a Bitcoin thing, but hey, it's like decentralized and it's kind of, there's a lot of crypto community on there. So it might be useful right. for you to, to find people. And, and people probably will like the, the Stimulant Bitcoin like uh, song for sure, I reckon on there. Yeah. It's a good place for it, man. Yeah, that, that, people like that song. It's funny. Some of the comments are funny, but overall, you know, it's good to see that somebody likes it. You know what I mean? I wasn't expecting that from that song. Like, so, you know, I'm looking forward to pub publishing more stuff. No, nah, hell yeah. Um, I, I like it. I think it's good. I mean, is, have you guys got any more questions, by the way? Um, I, I just wanted to ask, like, what other artists have you worked for? Like, who, who have you made videos for and stuff? Okay. Oh, uh, like mainstream artists? Whoever, yeah. Okay. Um, well, one artist that's from my city that I, that I really support, uh, his name is Gang Ta June, Gang 51 E June. Um, he's really popular and up and coming, uh, Cuddy forever. Um, but main, super mainstream. I've done stuff with Lil Boosie. I've done stuff with Nipsey Hussle. Um, yo, it's a long list of people. I don't never really kind of say who, but, oh, I've done some stuff. I can't even remember, yo, but. You check out my YouTube channel, you'll find some interesting stuff on there. You know what I mean? Yeah, that's, uh, that's what I'm planning to do. Like, I checked out a little bit earlier, but I was working, so I didn't have too much time. But I check right, it right. out uh, later on this evening. And, uh, yeah, I, I watched the Nipsey Hussle one and, and obviously your own one. Um, but I'll check out some of the other stuff coming on. Like, I must confess, I don't really listen to um, much, like, newer hip-hop music these days for some reason, whatever reason. Right, I right. find myself listening to, like, the, the, the old 90s stuff. But uh, I'll, I'll give it a shout-out. Mm -hmm. Um, and uh, yeah, I think like again, anyone listening, FYI, um, got to go ahead and follow you on Twitter, YouTube. I tell you what, plug everything you have right now, man. Go for it. Like tell tell everyone where to find you. Right. Okay. So yeah, you guys can go follow your boy on Twitter at King Spencer One Hundred, K I N G E Spencer S P E N C E R One Hundred. Uh, you can follow me on Instagram. I would say follow my Spencer Vibe account because my King Spencer 100 account is strictly music videos. But if you want to see more crypto and personal stuff, Spencer Vibe, V-I-B-E. And, you know, follow, stream me, your boy, everywhere on all social, on all um, streaming platforms other than uh, audience, uh, audience for now, you know. And, uh, yeah, Spencino, that's pretty much it, yo. I love it. Yeah, I am, everyone, I implore you go out there, like uh, give some follows, uh, give some support, uh, pick up any tracks that you can, uh, listen on Spotify, listen on Audius if, if, if you end up on there, King Spence, like anywhere else. Um, it's been amazing to have you on here uh, today. Like I've appreciated it. It's been great to like hear your perspective on some stuff and like just hear your story, like how things came about. Like it's, it's been awesome. And then, hey, like I'd love to have you back on and like, uh, couple of months time or something see where you're at see what you're up to and uh hopefully sure. you know help you promote whatever it is that you're you're doing all right well i say i think like uh, we've had a, a good amount of time so we'll wrap it up um i've got a quick uh, good good news outro for everyone out there just want to leave you guys on a positive note so we'll just read out just under 60 seconds i'd say of just some positive news titles uh, and then we'll call it a day so uh, i'll start off now just one day after learning CPR, a teen saves her friend's life using a procedure, she, procedure she'd just learned the day before. Uh, bike tires requiring no air have been made from NASA Rover Tech and will soon be available to all cyclists. After illegally bulldozing a historic London pub, the developers have been ordered to rebuild the entire building brick by brick. Elon Musk's brother has started a million garden movement to plant a garden for every household living in a food desert. Hemp is being used in walls and insulation as a game changer in the construction industry most recently. A federal judge has blocked further oil and gas extraction in Ohio's known only natural forest. A software exec has become a garbage man walking 12 miles a day in Washington, D.C. to pick up rubbish during the pandemic. And lastly, a senior has taken hundreds of thank you cards to truck stops during the pandemic to show drivers her gratitude for their work. Uh, and so that's the good news for everyone out there. Um, 
thank you so much for coming king spence thank you jerry and thank you ricardo for coming as well as per usual always here um and thank you so much for everyone who has listened in or watched uh, really appreciate it give us a like give us a follow um and just you know let us know any feedback that you have and as always we love you buy bitcoin Thank you.